Well, I'm excited to be here, and I can tell because my heart is pounding like crazy, but it's a good opportunity to be here amongst friends. So today I want to talk about the internet. Um, to start with, the internet is something that we all know and it's familiar to us, but it's probably something we don't consider to be the greatest invention since the Industrial Revolution. It's an innovation that's affected all of us. And the reason why it's so impactful is because it's open. It's open to commerce, it's open to innovation, it's open to ideas and services and so many things. <clears throat> but the irony to that statement is that all of us access the internet through a closed network. And that's an important thing that I want to talk about today. But before we go, I want to just do an experiment. And the purpose of this experiment is to try to validate a recent study that showed that something that we experiment, experience on a daily basis has the ability to increase our heart rate by up to 38%. Now that's almost as much as you get when you watch a really scary movie. So this is pretty intense stuff. So here we go. Technology, right? <laughs> One more time. There we go. This always happens at the worst time, right? Did anybody experience an increase in heart rate? Maybe skip a beat. <laughs> so, the idea here is that this spinning wheel of death is something that we can all appreciate, right? Because we've all experienced it. And when we experience that, we might even ask the question, is my internet broken? We don't know, right? So I want to start and just share a story with you about a, a city that is probably familiar to all of us. It's Ammon, Idaho. Now, Ammon is not a technology hub by any stretch of the imagination, but they've done some really amazing things. So I'm going to throw out a big term, and we're going to talk about this, but uh, they built the first dynamic, open access, fiber optic network. Now, hopefully by the end of this, all of that will make a lot more sense and maybe understand why it matters. So the Ammon story really starts with an individual named Bruce Patterson. Man, this is sensitive. There we go. So Bruce, uh, it starts with him. He's just a regular guy, but he's a smart guy, and he really knows how to listen. Now, he started his career as a plumber, and he eventually ended up as the IT director for the city of Ammon. Now, you may think plumber to IT, that's a pretty big stretch, right? But it might be because of his background as a plumber that he's been able to see IT problems in a different light. Now, Bruce is it didn't take him long to figure out that the internet was broken in the city because he was unable to connect the city facilities in a meaningful and, and really cost-effective way. So he took it upon himself to start to figure out that problem. Now, Bruce has been innovative as he's tried to solve these problems, but he hasn't worked alone. He's had the help of the city council, the mayor, Ammon residents, uh, some local service providers, and also some technology companies. And they've all been working together for the past several years to try to fix the internet. Now the challenges that the city of Ammon has faced are not unique. They're challenges that many cities face as well. But the thing that's important to know about the city of Ammon and why it matters is because they're fundamentally changing the way that we interact with the internet. And they've managed to solve some problems along the way that we might not even realize were problems. So I want to compare the experiences that we have on a daily basis with some of the experiences that Ammon residents might have so that we can see ways that the internet is broken. So to start, I want to talk about your broadband bill. I'm sure you've all gotten one of those before. If it's like mine, it's a couple pages long, has a bunch of line items of fees that you probably don't understand, and a total of more than you want to be paying. So what are we really paying for? Do we know? Do we understand what's going on there? The city of Ammon's broken the mold in this regard because they've taken, I keep skipping forward. Sorry about that, guys. Don't get ahead of me, OK? They've broken the mold in this regard because they want to be completely transparent with the people in the city. Um, so what they've done is they separated the infrastructure, which is the fiber optics, from the services that are on the network. And in, by doing that, they've given the residents the opportunity to participate in the network. So the residents opt in. And by opting in, they agree to pay for the cost of the infrastructure to their home. And it's about $3,000. So they can pay that up front, or they can choose to pay for it over 20 years, and it's about $17 a month. Uh, and another fee that they pay is the maintenance and operation fee. And this is also $17 a month. So for about $34 in the city of Ammon, you can get a fiber optic connection to your home. Any services that go on come as a different bill from the provider. 
So Ammon residents know exactly what they're paying for. So another part of the cost of the internet is what it costs when you switch from one provider to another. And some of you might have had that experience. I had a coworker who recently went through this process and it, it wasn't pretty. And his story is probably not unique. Um, he tried to first connect to the fiber optic network in his city and he was unable to. After a month, they finally told him, no, you can't connect. So his next choice and his only choice was to change from his cable provider to his DSL provider. Now, because these were two physically separate networks, there had to be infrastructure that came to his home and he had to have new equipment in order to make that switch. He got the equipment set up and it didn't work. Imagine that, right? So he called customer service and they couldn't help him out. They sent out someone. It took about three weeks for them to get there. And after that, he was finally able to get moved from his current provider to his new provider. So in total, it took about two months and countless hours for him to move from one service to another. That's just not acceptable, right? So in the city of Ammon, it's much different. So I have a, vid a little video here that shows you how this works. They're presented with a website. They choose from a list of services that they want, and they go through the subscription process. It takes about 15 seconds. And then a dynamic network is created from them through to the service provider. And when they want to change, they just find that service in the web page, click on subscribe. It takes about 10 seconds. So there you just witnessed what it's like to change providers in the city of Ammon. It's a little bit of a different experience, right? So gone are the days of months and weeks of waiting and fighting to get it done to simply clicking a button and having it happen for you. So if you've ever found yourself, and this is all hypothetical, this is not me talking at all. If you've ever found yourself at three o'clock in the morning, four hours into a binge watch of your favorite TV show and all of a sudden you get buffered, you might have had that experience or the sense that what you're paying for is not what you're getting. Now we live in a world that tells us that bandwidth is a scarce commodity. We hear that from our cell phone providers and our internet providers and they give us data caps and rate limits and all of these things that create this fear and uncertainty in us as we try to use these resources that have been given to us. But what if it was different? So the city of Ammon has taken a different approach and they've tried to create an environment that's a bandwidth abundant. So what they've done is they give all of the residents that connect to the network a gigabit connection. Now to give you some perspective of what that means, this is actually a thousand megabits so if you're on like a 50 megabit connection, you can see that you know, they're far out passing what you can do. So this white circle on the outside represents what a resident in Ammon gets. And most likely, you and I are up there at the top at the 10 megabit range. So to put this in TED terms, if you tried to download a 15 minute TED talk on your internet connection, it would take about a minute and 15 or 45 seconds. And that's if the stars have aligned and everything's working just perfectly and it would take about 22 minutes to upload that same video back to the internet. An Ammon resident can download that video in about two seconds, and they can upload it in about two seconds. So think about how your behavior might change if you were given a gigabit connection, no limits, no caps. So most likely, the network that you connect to the internet with is a closed network. And what that means is that you're only allowed to use the services that they provide on the network. If there's another service that you want, you're just out of luck or you have to change to a different network. So what we can do, well, I guess think back to my, my uh, yeah, that guy, back to my coworker. When he switched his network, he had a choice. He had two networks and they both had physical infrastructure that came into his home. So if we think about the roadways that we use on a daily basis, this would be like saying, don't touch that button too hard. This would be like saying that UPS and FedEx both have to build a road to your house in order to deliver packages to your, that you want. And that's pretty silly, right? We understand that. So the city of Ammon said, let's make this an open access network. And that allow, and, and they'll allow anybody to come in and provide a service and deliver packages to your home. So what this looks like, the outer circle is the, uh, the fiber optics. And this is just a sampling of a few of the services that they can put onto that fiber optic. So that's the common roadway that goes into the home. And they do this using cutting edge technology. And they're able to create logical slices of the network that are uh, separated from each other and it creates this private environment for the service to be delivered to the home. So just as a recap to help illustrate what the city of Ammon has that your network probably doesn't have, 
They have complete transparency in costs. They've separated the transport from the infrastructure, and the residents are able to buy into that network. And they've made it very, very simple to switch from one service to another. They've created an abundance of bandwidth. Each resident is given a one gigabit connection, and they can choose how they want to, to allocate that. And there are no data caps or limitations enforced by the operator. And they've also created a marketplace of services that allow the residents to choose which services that they want, and then it creates a platform for innovation so that the service providers can come in and truly provide services that the subscribers on the network want. So, geez, this is a quote from Kevin Kelly. He said, of all the endeavors we humans are now engaged in, perhaps the greatest of them all, the grandest of them all, is the steady weaving together of our lives, minds, and artifacts into a global scale network. Now, this network that he is envisioning, it's not the internet that we know today. And the AMA network is more than just fast internet. Yeah, it's bigger than that. And to really be able to realize Kelly's vision, most likely it's going to be small networks that are open access, that have abundant bandwidth, and have the ability to ensure security, privacy, and reliability. And Ammon has built the first network to help realize that vision. So as I've described the Ammon network, there's a possibility, I'm sure it's remote, but maybe you've felt a little bit of internet envy. And I know that I feel it too. But I hope that you can consider the implications the Emma network might have for you and your family and for, for your community as well. What they've done is unique, but it's not something that isn't reproducible. This can be done in your town as well. So consider for a minute your current internet provider. If you could change that provider at a click of a button, would you do it? What about your home security and your home automation? If you could choose not to put that information on the public internet, all at the click of a button, would you do it? What about that amazing technology idea that you have? If there was an open access network with abundant bandwidth, would you build it? All of this is possible today in the city of Ammon, and it can be in your city too. So how do we start? I think the first step is to share what you've learned today with your friends and your neighbors, and especially with your city. It's in cities that these networks can be built because they're the right, the right place and the right entity. As long as the city stays true to the foundational idea that the network must be open. So, the internet is broken, but together we can fix it. <laughs>